Hey everyone, this is Mike from GeneBooPal, and today we're going to be talking about how you can set up YouTube to be the ultimate language learning tool. GeneBooPal is specifically focused towards learning Mandarin Chinese, but regardless of what language you're learning, these tools are going to be applicable to help you work on your listening skills while watching video content on YouTube. So stick around, regardless of what language you're trying to learn, I can guarantee that this will be helpful for you, and the best part is, all of these tools but one are completely free and you can set them up and be ready to go in five minutes or less. So let's get started. When I first started learning Chinese, I found it difficult to find interesting content in order for me to practice my listening skills and improve my vocabulary. I didn't know where I should search online, so I asked some Chinese friends and I found out that surprisingly there was tons of content available on YouTube in Mandarin Chinese. This blew me away that I had never seen this before, and I'd like to share with you how you can find that content in a future video, but in this video we're going to talk about how to optimize and or customize the YouTube interface so that it is set up to help you learn languages and reduce the amount of wasted time that you might have looking things up or rewinding and, and seeking to different parts in the video. All of these things, we can help optimize YouTube to be specifically set up to be a powerhouse for language learning. Before jumping right into the tools, I want to talk about a mindset that I've used in order to search for these tools myself, and hopefully that can be useful for you in whatever language you might be learning. What I've found is anytime I'm studying the language and I notice that I'm wasting time, particularly on a recurring basis, even if it's 30 seconds or a minute at a time, that can really stack up over time and become an incredible detriment to your ability to progress quickly. This is one thing that I noticed specifically with YouTube because it can be difficult to search to a specific point in the video, especially if you just want to hear something repeated really quickly again. So these are the sort of things that I think it's really important to try to start noticing more often and figure out how can I search for a tool that someone else might have made to eliminate this specific problem. But it's not only about finding these small problems, it's about figuring out how you can find these different tools and combine them together so that you're optimizing your language learning time, so that when you decide you want to start studying, there's very little time wasted waiting around for maybe seeking for another point in the video and having to hear uh, some of the content that you didn't really actually want repeated. These are the sort of things that you can improve by adopting this mindset. Okay, now let's get into the tools that we need to download. There's six tools that we're going to combine together to form this ultimate language learning tool. The first one I'm not even going to count, and that one is Google Chrome. So the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you have Google Chrome installed, and I tend to use it as my default browser, but it's going to be essential for this because what we're going to be doing is downloading different Chrome extensions that will be added to the browser. You can see them up here in the corner, and these Chrome extensions are what's going to apply the extra functionality to the YouTube interface. So it all starts with having this installed on your computer. So that's step one. But the first tool that we're going to talk about is something that any Chinese language learner is going to want installed regardless of whether you're learning on YouTube or any other website. And this is a pop-up dictionary called Zhongwen. And this pop-up dictionary, essentially how it works is when you go on and, and you add it to Chrome, which all you're going to have to do is click on this button here. I've already added it, so it just says remove for me. But it will install it and you'll see this button in the corner. And when you toggle that button, it turns it on and off. So it's really simple, but all it does is when you highlight over text, it will give you a definition, it'll give you the pinion and the tone for the characters and the combined uh, bigram word, or if it's you know multiple characters and forms of phrase, it'll show you that too. So this is really helpful navigating pretty much anywhere on the internet, but it's particularly important here because it will help you to be able to read certain types of digital subtitles, as well as the video titles themselves, if you're not quite familiar with the vocabulary or the particular characters in the title. So that's number one. So for number two, what we're going to want to download is something called the YouTube Playback Speed Controls. So what this does is it allows you to adjust the speed of YouTube very gradually. This is really helpful because I find that with YouTube you can adjust the speed from 100% to these different options that you're given here. So you can slow down to 75% or 50%. 
And these are stock options that you get with YouTube. The only problem with this is I find that it can be really difficult sometimes to get it just how you want it, particularly because 75 or 50 sometimes has poor audio quality, in which case I'd rather listen to it a little bit faster and just repeat the audio a few more times at a faster speed than listening to such poor audio quality. So once you've downloaded this YouTube playback control, uh, the YouTube playback speed control, what you've added is this series of buttons in the top right corner of the screen. So what you can do is you can go in and hit these buttons to dial the speed up and down. However, when it first starts out, it's going to be set up specifically to uh, change the speed to those same default settings. So you're gonna need to go into options, and on the options page, you can go into settings and you can change the step size for that speed. So I like to do 5% because that allows me to just step down to 95 or maybe 85% of the video playback speed. And that usually tends to be good enough that it's, it's helping me out a little bit to understand because it's slower, but it's not usually messing with the audio quality too much. So let's kind of see how it looks in action. So if we set it to 1.0 and play this video, you can hear it slowing down as I hit the button. So this can be really helpful. Tool number three is something called Controls for YouTube. You can find it at this link here. And by the way, I'll have all the links in the video description below so that you can quickly click through and download all of these Chrome extensions after the watching the video. But with this tool, once you download it, it will add these buttons to your YouTube playback. So if you see here, I've set up the settings to only add two of those two of those four buttons because I don't usually have a desire to skip forward, it's mainly skipping backwards. But before we get into that, one thing that I want to talk about that some people might not know is that the default settings on YouTube are you can play or pause the video just by hitting the space bar as well as you can skip backwards in the video by five seconds just by hitting the back arrow. So you can see here, just I'm just going to hit the space bar here and start the video and then I'm going to hit the back arrow and that's going to jump back five seconds. But you see that if you've missed a subtitle, maybe let's see a subtitle just comes up. So after that subtitle comes up, I might think, ooh, I actually wanted to hear that again. But the thing is, when I hit that back arrow, going back a full five seconds makes it so that I've kind of gone back a little bit extra. So now I'm wasting all this time until I get to see the subtitle again. So I'd like to skip back for a shorter amount of time. That's what these buttons are really great for. So if you go into these buttons, let me go here. You can go into options and it gives you the options for these different buttons and you can set individual times for each of those. And you can uncheck the box if, like I said, I didn't want the forward button. So here's the forward and the other forward. I unchecked those and they don't show up. And you can go in and optimize these, these settings. I prefer one and a half seconds and three seconds. One and a half seconds is usually just enough time to skip directly back to the previous subtitle if you just missed it. And three seconds gives you a little bit more. So uh, I'll show you that in just a second. One other thing is you can notice there's keyboard hotkeys for these as well. So you don't only have to just hit the uh, back arrow in order to do this or physically click the button. If you memorize these, um, these key combos, you can just do this with very quick hotkeys on your keyboard. So we'll show you an example of how those different options work together. So I can hit play and maybe speed up the video a little bit. And then I can hit the back arrow and go backwards five seconds, but maybe I just want to go back three seconds. So this shows you how you can get back just a little bit further. And let's show the one and a half seconds because this one is really good for just getting a very, very quick repeat. And if you want to hear something over and over and over again, the one and a half seconds is really useful for that. So you can see how all of these things are starting to come together to form something that's a little bit more useful to get rid of some of that wasted time. All right, tool number four is something called Copyfish Free OCR Software. If you don't know what OCR stands for, that means optical character recognition. And what it'll help us do is it will isolate what we call these hard subtitles from the background and turn them into a digital form. As you can see, you're not able to 
hover your mouse over this text the same way you can with the digital text and get the pop-up dictionary. What this will allow you to do is turn this text into a digital form so you can get a quick definition if you don't recognize a character. That way you don't have to go into a separate app on your phone or a separate app on your computer for the, uh, the dictionary in order to look something up. Especially if you don't know the character strokes or the pinion, it's easier to just look up. Sometimes you might have an accent that you're trying to deal with and it's difficult to, to figure out what that pinion is if you're just starting out from listening to the audio. All right, so if we just open the tool here, the first thing it'll ask us to do is select the area that the subtitles are appearing. So I'm just clicking and dragging here and I leave a bunch of extra space in case there's longer subtitles that'll show up in the future. You'll see why that'll be helpful in a second. So it just computed an OCR on those characters and you see that it pulled them all up. Now, it's not always going to be perfect, and particularly if your background is not black, it's harder for it to do the computation. But the cool thing that you can do about this here also is you can copy this to the clipboard and then you can use it on Google Translate. If you pay a little extra in this app, uh, I forget how much it is, but you can get it to do the translation automatically for you in here, but that's up to you. That's not something that I've used before, so I don't know too much about it. But another thing that you can do is you can continue through the video and just hit this redo OCR and it will take a new screenshot and do an OCR again for you. So there you go, you have another OCR and you just hit it again and you can do it again. So this is helpful to just kind of step through the video and get more and more translations as you go. Tool number five is closed captions and open transcript. Now this is something that is already available in YouTube, but it's something that I don't think most people know about, so I just wanted to highlight it here because it can be helpful in reading through the digital subtitles. I've pulled up a video here that has digital or soft subtitles available. So you can see when I click on the settings gear here, there's an option for Chinese simplified. So I have that selected and the subtitles are turned on. So this will now work with the Zhongwen pop-up dictionary and you can just scroll over the text, hover over it just like you would any other text. And that's helpful because it works even while the video is playing back. But the thing that you can do in addition to this is if you scroll down, you can click on these three buttons here and hit open transcript. Now when you open the transcript, it will give you the entire transcript of every single subtitle in the video. This is cool because you can go in and you can copy that into a Word document if you'd like to study it prior to watching the video or afterwards. It's something that you can kind of read along with. Now this is going to be important in the next tool that we're going to discuss. So that brings us to tool number six, which is Link. I don't know if you've ever used Link before, but Link is a, another, it's a, this is the only paid tool that I'm going to discuss here, but this is a website that you can get a membership to, and when you use their, um, their Chrome extension, what you can do is when you click on it, you can upload this YouTube video to Link. And so what will, it will do is it will access the subtitles here, and it will pull those in as the text for uh, the video. And if you want to check out Link, you should go out and check out their, their website. But basically what it'll do is it'll give you a full transcript and you can click on those words and it will store them in a database and you can keep track of which words you know and which words you're not quite comfortable with. And basically what that does is it will change the highlight over that text until it gradually goes down to just a blank highlight so that you can tell that you know the character or the word, and you'll see some text on the screen that is still highlighted. Um, this is really useful because when I use this, what I'll do is I'll have it on my phone, and I'll pull up the transcript on my phone as I'm watching it on the computer. So I can watch on the computer, I can step through the video, and when I see a character that I don't know, I can just tap on the character or the word on my phone and see a quick definition and record it in the database. So there you have it. Those are the six tools that you can use to optimize your YouTube experience for learning Chinese or any other foreign language. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you find these tools useful in your own language learning journey. If you have any other tools you know of that you'd like to share, please do so in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out our next video, which will be about how to find Chinese language content on YouTube. This video is also applicable to how you can find foreign language content for any other language you might be learning. So be sure to check it out. 
Doing this will help you to find content that you're truly interested in so that you can use that along with the tools that we've discussed today to work on your Chinese listening skills while watching something that you really enjoy. The last thing to do is if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please be sure to give it a like and hit the subscribe button right now. Also, please be sure to visit us on our website at jeanbupal.com where there's tons of other blog content to supplement everything you'll find on this channel. Thanks everyone.